Have you ever made mistakes at work too? Well, so have I. And so have Linus Torvalds. By the way, he's from Finland too. Talvi on täällä kylmä ja pimeä. In this video, I reveal the most expensive mistakes we coders make. I'll show you how any level of coder can easily fix it and what makes this mistake expensive. But first, how does this mistake start to show up in a daily work? And what was the turning point for a change? Well, you know, when you're at work, there's always a bit of made-up rush. Deadlines are getting closer and the pressure of the fixed box is starting to build. I was looking at problematic code that I was working with and suddenly found a clever solution that can easily fix the problem. That brought smile to my face. Just like this comment. Thank you. Then I implemented a quick fix and felt like a king. Deployed the fix to production and the customer was very satisfied with how quickly I resolved the problem. But when I was making these quick fixes, I didn't pay attention to the quality of the code. I didn't clean up my functions, nor did I pay attention to the variable names. I was just thinking in short term, mm -hmm. if only I could get it to work quickly and the customer would be satisfied. Before I knew it, quick fixes were becoming rare. Bug tickets just started piling up. It felt like when I fixed one, three new ones popped up. The code started to be very difficult to understand. The comments were no longer up to date. The function did something totally different from what was mentioned in the comments. Difficult to understand sections were not divided into pure functions. Everything started piling up in the same file. A voice in my head said, This is just a quick fix. I'll improve this code later. At this point, when a seemingly simple fix took all day, I realized the technical debt that had arisen and how it was time to start catching up. This can't continue. Then you might ask, well, what makes this expensive? It's normal that sometimes bug fixes take a little longer. Well, you're on the right track, but the price accumulates over the span of years. It grows and grows like a snowball rolling down a hill. Similar to compound interest effect in investments, but in a negative light. Poorly organized or written code is difficult to read and takes time to understand. You know that feeling of who the heck has written this terrible code? Then Git reveals it was you two months ago. Oh. Good, well-written code documents itself through clear function names and understandable variable names. In conjunction with a pretty and well-organized folder structure, if these things have been ignored, code becomes harder to understand and changing things take more time. Because, well, of course you need to understand, does this function add an item to the shopping cart or removes one? Bad code resists change. You don't dare to change bad code when you don't know what effects it might have. You change one line of code and think to yourself, this doesn't affect any other part of the application. But in reality, no one in the whole app can open PDF files anymore. Badly written functions often need to be fully understood and completely rewritten if you want to get rid of its sticky tentacles. This meaning, adding new feature on top of such function takes a very long time and is therefore very expensive. The cost can also be seen in developers' motivation to improve and develop the system, and therefore they more commonly drift into burnout and in the worst case, leave the company. It goes without saying that recruiting a new person is very expensive, and all this time spent on system maintenance is taken away from developing something new. As a result, the competing product gets ahead with better code base and thus new and better features. In short, bad code increases technical debt, and just like a financial debt, interest accumulates over time, becoming more and more expensive if it's not paid off. And hey, it doesn't matter whether you're a Mark Zuckerberg or a junior developer who just launched their first website, the following steps work for everyone. But then you might ask, I'm afraid that if I try to refactor and rewrite problematic feature, I might not be able to make it work again. Well, come on, I trust you, you can do it. And if things get too overwhelming, you can always use Git and just discard changes and try again later. And as Anne-Marie said, courage does not always roar. Sometimes it's the quiet voice at the end of the day saying, 
I will try again tomorrow. So even if you are a junior developer, I encourage you to jump into the deep end and refactor a bad feature or even just a function. You learn a lot and your colleagues will thank you for it. Hire up non-tech guys, maybe later. When I started to clean up my mess, I watched videos on how to write good code, read different blogs. One thing that really stuck with me was this. Write code in a way that even person that has never coded before understands it. This sentence hit me hard. After learning this, every time I'm writing a comment what the function does, I'll just convert the comment into the function name. And you know? Comments can become obsolete over the lifetime of the code. Function names on the other hand, more rarely. So remember to keep file size small, use functional programming, longer rather than short variable names, and you will become Finland level programmer, creating operating systems from scratch. Hmm, maybe that's why Finnish people are so good at coding, cause winters are so long and dark.